how's it going guys? I'm sure you saw the title of this video so you probably know what we're going to do, but today we are going to be creating a brand new wiring harness for the Mega Squirt on my Z31. Um, so the reason I want to do this is because when I did my Mega Squirt swap, I made my own harness and it was okay. It worked, but it, it really wasn't great. Um, and I want to create something that's a little bit more modular as well, as well as I have more things that I want to run now and so I need some more wires to go to them. So instead of trying to modify the old harness, which I really wasn't super happy with, I'm just creating a absolute brand new one um, and it's going to be absolutely awesome. Um, so if you guys don't know, um, these are the ends on a mega squirt right here. And um, I've already made these. This is from the ECU to my firewall. You can see there, I think they're like 15 inches long is what I measured roughly. Um, and the reason that I have these cut so short is because we're going to be using one of these firewall pass-throughs. So hopefully I can do this with one hand. You twist this coupler and it comes apart. Boom, boom, just like that. So this is going to be able to mount to our firewall and this will be the engine bay harness and it will just plug in, boop, and you're all done. It's secure, it's watertight, and it's going to be fully removable, removable if I ever want to pull it out. So I'm not gonna to have to pass things through the firewall. It's not gonna be a pain in my butt. It's going to just work really, really nicely. So I'm super duper excited about this. Let me go ahead and kind of run you through exactly how I'm planning on doing it. So first, I made this. I just took a picture from the user manual and uh, you can see it's got all the pinouts right there. I mirrored it and then redid the pinouts for the other side. Cause when you plug one in, it's mirrored. Um, so you need to know, you know, this is going towards the engine um, and this is going towards the ECU. So just, just so that it's easy enough to know. Um, and then I've just gotten written down everything down here. Um, I believe all of these pins are 20 gauge. Um, and then these ones here, the bigger dots are 16 gauge. Um, so I've got them circled for the 16 gauges. I don't have all of them filled. I don't necessarily need all of them, but we'll figure that out as we go. Um, so yeah, these are 20 gauge and these are uh, 16. I believe the wire that comes with Megascore is 18 gauge. Um, so it's a little bit bigger than the 20, but I'm gonna go ahead. These are the pins for the, uh, for the harness right here. And this is the crimper tool. We're gonna see if we can get these 18 gauges in those 20 pins. Um, I don't really wanna have to deal with finding one that's 18 gauges, because this one is pretty hard. This is a 47 pin connector, um, and you can get ones that are fewer pins with higher, um, like higher wire size, but you sacrifice the number of pins, and I've used a good amount of them. Um, so I've got six, nine here that I haven't used, so I could technically get away with the 36 pin connector. Um, if that's if I just went exactly what's based off of here, um, but I believe I'm gonna be adding a few things, so I'm not 100% sure that's what I wanna do anyways. Um, so that's how that is. It's, it was a little complicated to get everything down, um, but I think we're going to have a good job. And then I also went ahead and printed out, these are the pinouts for the Mega Squirt. You can see the gray and the black plug, uh, right there. And it just tells you which pin, pin number one on the black plug, you know, is the idle air control number two B. So I used that to go ahead and pin these. And then I also have right here, this is my old harness that I pulled out of my car. Um, I double checked the new harness against these, so I made sure that they're all in the right spot, as well as we also have a bunch of filler wire if we need it. Because what we're gonna go to try to do is, I don't know if you guys know who Rob Dom is, he's a YouTuber, and he just recently built, like a couple months ago, a engine harness for his rotary. And his engine harness, it cost him probably like $2,000 in materials. He goes over the cost at the end of the video. Um, but it is a absolutely beautiful harness. He made it twisted so that it's super flexible. It's made out of super high quality stuff. Um, absolutely beautiful harness, but it is a little expensive. But we're going to be trying to emulate it as much as we can on this build because even though we don't have that high budget, we still want the functionality and security of having a really, really nice harness. So. I went ahead and got all this stuff, and what we're gonna to try to do is twist the harness. Um, so if you don't know, there's going to be a center harness right here, number one is our, well, one, two, and three, right up in here. Those are going to be our twisted shielded wire. So this stuff right here that I have in this box, hopefully you guys can see it. There are five wires in here, I'm only gonna be using two of them. Um, but this is what we call twisted shielded wire and the main like the number one reason why I didn't like my old harness was because I had a lot of interference on my cam and crank sensor um, so when I was getting 
um, the sensor in from the cam and the crank, I could look at it in my Mega Squirt, and it just wasn't super clean. It was very choppy. It still worked plenty fine, but the issue is I had the cam and the crank running right next to a bunch of coils on my engine, um, and then all of that running back through the main harness. Um, and those create a lot of EMF frequency waves, which really impact other wires next to them. So what we're going to go ahead and do is you run shielded wire, and it's basically a big Faraday cage around your cam and crank wire so that you don't get any interference from outside wires. We've got them shielded in the very center of our core here because they're the thickest, so we're going to wrap everything around that. Um, and we're going to do our absolute best to make a super clean signal. Um, so that is the, that is the goal, um, whether or not we hit there. Um, we're going to see. So, super excited for that. Let's look at what else we've got. I've got some brand new injector connectors, um, brand new coil connectors. These are like $2 a piece from Rock Auto. Um, so, you know, you're looking at $20, $25 plus shipping um, in new connectors. Not too bad. I've got some of these. These are just Amazon special Deutsch connector knockoffs, two pins. Um, and then these I got from Racetronics. There are some four pin, there's some six pin um, connectors in there. Nothing too crazy. This is wire harness tape. Um, so it's the really nice fabric kind. I've ordered, it's, there's got four rolls of it. I've got three in here right now. Um, but we're gonna use that to wrap our harness with to try to make the wires kind of like want to move inside a little easier. I'll show you that in just a second here. Um, this is gonna go on the outside of it. I got a couple of these. Um, these are like, let me just show you over here. It's this stuff. So it's kind of like this plastic sheathing. Um, and I was originally going to just use this on the outside, but I wanted to make it weather tight so that I could go ahead and just wash my engine bay without any worries. Um, as well as when I used heat shrink on this, I ended up melting this stuff here with the heat gun because it just got too hot. So um, that is going to be what we're shielding with on the inside. I'm gonna roll in this and then I'm gonna put that stuff on top. And then I have, you can see there's some right here, pretty thick heat shrink. Um, but I've got massive stack of three different sizes. I believe this is uh, one and five eighths inches. Let's see if it says on it. I don't know. It says on these somewhere. Um, and then I believe this is one inch, and then I believe this is five eighths of an inch. Um, so, and I've got two of these. These are all 10 foot rolls. I think that's gonna be enough to complete this harness. Um, we will see how that goes. But, so we're gonna do <laughs> the tape, and then we're gonna do the shielding, and then we're gonna do the heat shrink. And the main reason for that is because I couldn't find any just like regular heat shrink. Um, so this does have adhesive on it. And I don't want the wires to be stuck together. I want them to be able to move freely. So we're going to try to wrap it in a couple layers just so that it doesn't, none of the adhesive actually gets to the wires themselves. Uh, but that way we're like triple insulated, triple protected. And this stuff, if I were to do it again, I would try my hardest to look for a two to one. This is a three to one shrink ratio right here, which means that this is, you know, I'm gonna say it's roughly two inches across right now, and it's gonna shrink down to about that that far across. You know, three to one. So it's gonna shrink pretty far, but when it does that, it also makes the wall pretty thick, which makes it not very flexible. Um, so if I would do this again, I would definitely try for the two to one. I chose the three to one because I didn't want to have to get a bunch of different sizes for a bunch of different like thicknesses of my harness. Um, this is much more adaptable to what I'm gonna be doing, just a couple sizes for all of it. Uh, but uh, I think it'll still work fine. What I'm going to try to do is preform it. So before I go ahead and heat shrink this, I'm going to get it into the correct shape that it needs to be, and then I'm going to heat it up and shrink it after that. That way, hopefully, if it does not want to bend very much, it's already pretty much in the general area that it needs to be. So we're going to be dealing with that as well. Um, all of this stuff together, um, minus the wiring kit. This wiring kit was about $150, and then this connector was, I want to say $90 on Amazon. This tool, about another $20. Um, all of this stuff here, um, these like sheathing, I think believe that was $20. Wiring harness tape for four rolls, I think $15. Um, and then I got another couple connectors. These are for my fan shroud. Um, these I've already got on my car. So this is idle air control, TPS, um, cam crank, and then that's my CHTS, and then this is flex fuel. Um, so I got a couple different connectors there, not too many dollars in that. Uh, and let's see, the, I believe the twisted shielded wire was $30, 30 to 30, it's between 30 and $40 I believe for 25 feet. Definitely don't need that much. Um, I believe these connectors were like 20 bucks and then I believe these were 60 bucks or something for a couple of those. 
So overall, it is definitely nowhere near $2,000. Um, and I think we're still gonna be able to build a very high quality harness. So you guys, I've already started making this. Um, so this is actually the second video I've made. Um, and then I went ahead and decided I've changed enough stuff in my setup to go back and redo it. So the way I was initially going to do it was just like this, where you have, you know, heat shrink onto this stuff here. And then I was gonna put these two together and then one big heat shrink and uh, harness across all these. Unfortunately, for some reason, this stuff came with heat shrink right here, um, but it's definitely not big enough for the largest diameter, this guy right here. Um, so I have absolutely no idea what they were thinking when they put that kit together. They said it came with uh, lots of these pieces of heat shrink, but it didn't work at all. So I'm not 100% sure, um, but we've got this big stuff, so it doesn't matter too much. Uh, yeah, so I went ahead and made these harnesses first. Um, and they came out really well. What I did is I went ahead and took some of this fabric tape and I wrapped it around this end over here. And then I twisted the wires concentrically. You can kind of see the twist in here. It's not a super great twist uh, because this is just, they're all thin wires and it's a very small bundle of them. Um, it's better to have a very thick core when you're twisting wires, something for them to actually wrap around. Um, but it's still twisted pretty well and these are fairly flexible. So if I wanted to move this up or if I wanted to move it down, um, you know, it'll flex because when you have wires that are straight, the outside wants to like be pulled and the inside wants to be, you know, pushed together. So f twisting it like this allows you to be able to bend it without having any issues. So um, I did both of these like that. This is going to go into this guy right here, up into our firewall. And if you may notice, hopefully you guys can see, I have this seal that I 3D printed on here. So these are gonna be available on the zgarage.net. Um, it just fits in. There's like a little recess on this side, it fits in, and then there's this big nut that you tighten down onto it. So this is gonna be our firewall pass-through. This fits into the firewall, um, this little groove right here, and then this will just sit there. So we're gonna go ahead and pin all of these wires now, and then we're going to use our pin out right here to go ahead and crimp all of these connectors on and then pin them through this guy, through the back here. So we're gonna be seeing, I believe sockets on this side. Um, sockets will be coming out of this. So that is the next step. Um, I was going to put this all in one big bundle. I think I'm gonna leave it as two just in case I ever need to modify it a little bit. Um, but I don't think that'll be too much of an issue because it's gonna be on the interior. I'm gonna be able to zip tie it up out of the way anyways. All right, now that we've got that, I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, cutting all these wire ends off um, and then putting on the sockets, I believe. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this all turns out just the way we've been planning. All right, let's get to that. All right, I'm halfway through. Um, I did the gray harness, as you can see. Um, I went ahead and pinned all of these, and they're looking pretty good. Um, some tips if you're doing it the same way I am. Um, I found that you can really do it twice. You can crimp it twice. Um, the back part, like the thicker part right here, um, you can fit two crimps on it. Um, that's just gonna make it a little bit more secure. So do like once in the back and then once in the front, super easy. And then I forgot there are three wires here that don't need to go through the firewall. That is our power for the ECU, um, my O2 sensor, and then the fuel pump. And so I went ahead and stripped two of them, but um, we'll go ahead and put those into what they need to go later. Um, so those will go back that way. And then I also forgot the ECU main ground, main ground. So I went ahead and put that N5 right here, one of the thick ones. And the thicker ones have a green stripe on the base of the connector, as you can see. So that one is a thicker piece that'll go on one of the 16 gauge right here. I also found out, luckily I did this right, I started pinning and then I was like, oh shoot, I really better be careful and make sure that this is actually what it should be. You can see this one, you can see this one says pin and this is going to be towards the ECU that way and then, you know, obviously firewall that way. So pin is what these are, this is the male end. These are pins and then this one, if you can tell, the bottom there, it's kind of faint, it says SOC for socket. That is going to be the other side. Um, don't have them in the same place. There are these guys here, and they are just kind of tubes. So the pins go into the sockets, if you guys need to know. Um, the 16 gauge actually come together, or they came in the same bag and I put them together, so no need to worry about that. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pin the rest of that, this black harness right here. Um, and I, as I'm going through, I'm making sure each, each and every single one that goes through is something that needs to go through. That's how I found these three. Um, 
as well as just, you know, verifying what I have so that when I go to do it in the future, I kind of know roughly what color it needs to be. Um, but I believe most of these are just uh, fuel pump or fuel injectors and uh, spark. So nothing too crazy on that harness. Um, other than that, going pretty good. I'm going to do all these and then we'll pick up from there. All right, guys, I got the second one pinned here. Um, I did forget to kind of trim these to length. Um, I did the other harness, so these ones are a little bit varied, um, plus or minus like a quarter of an inch from the longest pin to the shortest one. So that will cause a little bit of bunching of the wires at the edge, but it shouldn't be too bad. Um, and the other one's pretty good. So next thing we're going to go ahead and do is take these and pin them into the back of this connector. Um, so if you guys remember, this direction is going towards the engine bay. It's going out that way and then the back. So on the back here, it does show us... If you can kind of see there's number one and then it goes up to two and then over to three. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just match that on here. Um, up to two, over to three right there. So we're going to be doing on the ECU side, going like that. Just make sure you don't mix that up and get it confused. Um, and it should all be good. It does come with these tools. I believe the red one is for the 18 and then the, or the 20 and then the blue one is for the 16 gauge. But in order to get these out, you like stick it through the back and then just like I think there's a little plastic tab that grabs onto the lip on these. If you can see the, it'll focus on the lip. You can see there's a lip on it. I think this pushes that plastic tab out of the way when you set it in here. Um, so I don't, hopefully we won't have to pin it, but you'll put this through, push it in, and then you should be able to pull the wire out from the inside. So shouldn't be too big of an issue for us if we pin it correctly the first time. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about the twisted shielded wire real quick on the other side. Alright guys, this is how it came out and I am pretty happy with it. Um, so I did find tachometer out needs to be out here as well. We don't need to go put that through the firewall. Um, and then I put in this blue and orange is going to be the AC trigger um, to turn on the AC compressor. Um, and then the black here is going to be power for my fuel pump because I have a fuel pump relay done. Um, so it is going to power that. That's what's coming through here. I've made that one of the bigger ones. See if you guys can see these pins in here. Looking pretty good. So I do have a couple that are still open. So it's not really too big an issue on this side here. Uh, but on this side, we want to make it as weather sealed as possible. So what comes in the kit, if I can get these out real quick. We have these little plugs. So we've got, I think, five of the small ones and then four, five of the big ones. Um, so I need to count. Let's see how many we have. We've got six. We have six. We have six of the small ones and then three of the big ones that we aren't using. So we can plug all of the big ones, um, but then one of the small ones, I probably am going to put just a regular like a uh, socket on it and then put it through um, just to nothing. So it's going to be a pinned socket um, that won't go anywhere. So it'll just plug the hole it, um, just in order to make this weather shield because we want all of the holes on this side, the engine bay side of the harness to be completely full. Um, just for maximum weather sealed. Uh, we also have this guy right here, which is a little boot. He goes on, you can, if I can do it with one hand, he fits on here as a weather seal. I don't know if I can get it with one hand. He goes on the end there um, to seal this end up. So I'm probably going to put heat shrink and then this on top of the heat shrink um, up to the connectors on this side because we're going to need to let it bunch out a little bit. So the heat shrink is probably going to end up stopping about right there or something. Um, so this is going to help just protect the rest of this side of the seal. So it is looking pretty good. I will say uh, the one thing that I ran into is some of these wires are smaller. Um, so I thought they were all 18 gauge, but I'm pretty sure some of them are 20 gauge. Um, so when I ran into 20 gauge, which uh, the all of the spark outputs were 20 gauge, I believe, and then all the injector outputs are 18 gauge, um, there's kind of a kind of a click you have to push into to get to this final position of the pin, like all the way out locked into place. Um, and I found a lot of the thinner wires um, tried to like kink and bunch up like on the back here um, instead of actually pushing all the way through. So what I ended up doing is you can see um, about like a like five millimeters or so of the pin at that point. So I just took some needle nose pliers, grabbed them and pulled them through. The reason I'm okay with doing that is because these are actually solid pins. If you got a cheaper knockoff bulkhead connector, this is an actual Deutsch connector. Um, super, super high quality, high brand name. Um, but if you got a cheaper one, 
you might end up running into hollow pins. And then if you have hollow pins, you could actually crush them with the pliers. So you definitely want to be careful, figure out which type you have. If you have a spare, just grab onto it with these and see if you accidentally crush it or deform it. Um, and then put a socket on it um, just to make sure it slides on and off really smooth. Um, but other than that, I think we're doing pretty good. This looks really, really nice. Super excited with that now. This whole piece, this one modular piece, is able to go into the car and come out as many times as I need it to. So I'm super, super happy about that. All right, now on to side number two. Move that out of the way here. It's pretty much the exact same process, except we're gonna have sockets coming out of here. Um, put that over here. Now, I think the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to just pin every single wire as long as it is. I'm not gonna cut it to length or anything. And then I'm gonna go put this in the car. And then I'm going to run it to where it needs to go and then cut it about six inches after that. So I have about six inches of length. Um, I might, I probably will do eight inches after where it needs to go because it's going to need to be twisted still. And even though twisting isn't like super, it's not super tight twisting, um, it will eat up some of that length. And I would definitely rather have my harness be a little bit too long than a little bit too short. So. Um, that's probably what I'm going to do is put it in the car, run everything to where it needs to be, uh, and then uh, just so that I can actually figure out. You could measure, um, in the Rob Dom video, he measures every single wire and where it needs to go in its length, um, but I'm not 100% sure on how exactly I'm going to route everything yet, so I think this is going to be a really good visual representation. So, I'm going to pin this connector. It's going to be really long and really obnoxious, but we're going to go ahead and put it in the car and see how it looks. Alright guys, at the core of our engine side harness is this twisted shielded wire. Now you can see it when I go ahead and strip it back, it's got a bunch of this aluminum foil um, dropping all over there. And then there's actually some extra plastic just to kind of space everything out evenly. Um, but here is the main part of it. It's technically four wires, but this bare copper is actually our ground. Um, so we'll, we, we will be using that in the future. Um, and then we've got three right here. I'm gonna use two, red and black for cam and crank. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of cut that one off. We're not gonna use it. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, we need to pin these, and then we also need to ground this shield. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is probably take this a little bit further back, and then we're gonna wrap this dude backwards, and then I'm going to solder a wire onto him. Um, he is going to be the ground for this, so we'll go ahead and put a wire out of here, and we'll ground it with our other grounds. Um, that should give us a really good grounded, um, grounded shield, grounded shielded cable. Excuse me. So um, I think that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and work on that, and then we'll see how it turns out. All right. If you guys watched my video last year when I was making my harness, you'll know what these are. Um, but these are solder seal connectors. Basically, it is just a thing of heat shrink, and then in the center, whoop, dropped one. Okay, I'll pick it up. In the center here, we have a ring of solder. Um, so what this is, is it's a really, really easy way to make nice weather tight connections um, between two wires. Uh, if you've ever twisted a wire before and you think that that is the right way to do it, um, you're probably a beginner because twisting wires really is not a great way. Um, and then crimping is like second best, um, but the best way to connect two wires together is solder. Um, it is going to make sure none of the wires are stressed and is going to make a nice long lasting connection. Um, and then something like this is going to make sure it's weatherproof. So something like these, I really, really recommend. Um, the one downside to them is they do make a fairly thick um, connection. Uh, the uh, heat shrink is, you know, it's heat shrink. So it's going to be over both edges. Um, it's not going to make a nice flush wire. So uh, I'll show it to you in just a sec. But it does make a fairly big uh, wire size um, if you make too many of them. So just be careful, cognizant of what you're doing um, so you don't make a harness that looks really, really ugly. But regardless, I used one right here. We'll see if I can put my hand there. Um, so you can see I went ahead and connected just a regular black copper grounding wire to this guy right here. I gave him a little extra lead. Uh, I didn't necessarily need that much. I just thought it might be a good idea um, just for you know ease of use. Um, but it's gonna look like that. You can see how thick the heat shrink is compared to just the other two wires. So it's not 
perfect, um, but I think it's going to work fine. And then I just stole this piece of ground wire from my old harness, but really anything that is at least gauge of the copper here is going to work fine. It is just a grounding shield, so it's not super duper important, but you don't want to skimp out on wire. Um, if this is the thing that makes your you know entire harness not work, then you've just wasted all that time. So definitely use it. Um, use the right type of stuff. This is high rated wire already. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, pin these guys here, and then we'll go ahead and continue building the rest of the harness. All right guys, real quick, before I got too far in, I wanted to show you, I put the plugs in here. See if it'll focus. Put the plugs in, so we got those three big white ones, and then there's two red ones over there, and one over there. Um, I do have some more empty spots, but they're along the outside ring here, so I can do those when everything else is in. Um, everything's going good, pretty, pretty good so far. Only thing is, the sockets, do not protrude from this side, so you really have to push them in from the from the back side here. I think it's going to be okay from how these went. It wasn't as hard of a push to get them through um, as the other side was, so I think that these will go through okay on the smaller wires. But regardless, we're going to have to do it anyways. So let's just we'll just take our time putting those in, make sure we don't accidentally crush any wires and break them. That would be the worst case scenario. Um, but other than that, going good. All right, guys, it is a big bundle of wires, but it is all done, and it looks honestly really, really cool. Super excited to get this in the car. Uh, one thing, one main thing, um, I went ahead and added in the cast ground. I was looking, it's actually probably on my other sheet over here. Um, I was looking on the gray connector sheet, and uh, I saw crank sensor positive and crank sensor negative. Um, so before, I had it grounded to just the regular sensor ground. Um, so that could have been causing some of the signal interference that I was that I was dealing with. So we went ahead and put a new pin in. Um, it's on the edge, number 38, so pretty easy to get to. Um, other than that, I think pretty much everything here is good. It looks really, really nice. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to install the other side in the car, and then this side will butt up to that one. Um, so we should be able to go ahead and start measuring out the length of all of our wires. All right, guys, so here we are in the Z. You can see I've got the harness in right there. It's a little bit dark to see the bulkhead, um, but I did get it in. The seal fits really, really nice. Let's come over to this other side here. You can see I've got the main wire harness out here. Let's see if you guys can see the connector. Right down in there. Hopefully you guys can see that good enough. It looks really, really cool. I really like it. Um, we might have to deal with some of these battery cables a little bit. They're kind of right next to it, um, but we can deal with that later. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is put in this, and then we're going to run the wires where they need to go, and then trim them to length. All right, guys, it is getting a bit dark outside, but everything is routed pretty close to where it's going to be. There's still a few things I'm not 100% sure on their location, um, so I have to figure that out. But let's go ahead and run through it. I got the main harness coming right through here. Um, I think this is a really great spot to have it, and I'm going to immediately branch off all of these, um, the, the grounds, and we're going to go ahead and ground right here. I think that's going to be just fine. Um, you're supposed to ground to the actual negative battery, in your term or your negative terminal battery, negative battery terminal, <laughs> excuse me, um, but this is pretty dang close to it. You know, it's, it's the cable, so I think that's going to be fine. Um, Got these guys right here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this harness tape and I'm gonna go ahead and put it around where I want to branch off so these I'm kind of have to unweave them from the harness but they're gonna branch off right here um, these guys right here are gonna come up over this way um, one of them goes or a couple of them are gonna go to here to this sensor a couple of them are going to the oil pressure sensor and then one of them is going to come up and trigger our fans so we need to deal with those um, and then we have it coming back here, and it splits off into three different places. We have our um, even side and our odd side injectors and uh, spark and everything. So this is the odd side, 135. Um, this is the even, 246. And then on this side, we also have the CHTS, because I relocated up to here. And then I also have the crank angle sensor right here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and I think I'm going to redo the connector on that one to one of the Racetronics four pin connectors. Um, just so that it's new and nice and weatherproofed and it won't break on me. Um, and then I might go ahead and use one of the two pins on this. I already have a two pin aftermarket. It's like a GM style. Uh, but I don't know if I, I don't know if I like it or not. It's a really long lead. Um, you can see it goes all the way back to here. But, and then that's come over this way. 
we have one wire coming out here for our AC compressor. Um, might leave that blank for the time being. Um, just like run it all the way here and then just like tuck it somewhere. And then I have a couple over here. This is the intake air temperature, the map sensor. Um, we have sensor ground and five volt reference. Um, and then we also have a boost, the boost controller. I think it's this one right here. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna put my boost controller like right down here. I'm gonna mount it onto one of these bad boys. Um, kind of where the original intake mounted. Um, so I still have to build the mount for that. So when I go ahead and get that done, I'll be able to get the perfect measurement. Um, so I think I'm going to just tie this up here tonight, kind of loop all of these inside the engine bay and close the engine bay. Um, but when I go ahead and pick back up, I'm going to go ahead and trim all these to length once we know everything, where everything is going to go. And then uh, we should be all good to go ahead and start putting heat shrink and finishing off this harness. Alright guys, as you can see we have the harness back out onto the table here, and uh, what I went ahead and did is just ran all the wires everywhere they need to be, and then used a sharpie here to mark them. Um, you can see there's one dot right there, and then up over here there's two dots. Um, one is where it exits the harness, um, and then two is where it terminates. Um, so I know how, how much wire to cut. What I'm probably going to end up doing is cutting uh, two to three inches afterwards on anything like this. This is the fan switch, so it's going to go to a relay um, that turns on the fan. And then anything that actually terminates in a harness itself. Um, so we'll grab one of these guys. All right, so as you can see, the injector connectors have a decent amount of harness with them. Um, so I'll probably cut an inch or two back from where it is marked on something like this and then just leave the rest of this harness to make up the slack. Um, so to speak, not slack, but extra. Um, so that is probably how I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to try to make the center bundle first, and I'm calling the center bundle center in the sense that it is the twisted shielded wire. Um, that actually doesn't, so it, the way this works is it goes out, ground split off, um, some of this stuff splits off, and then you have pretty much three mains after here. You have your right side of the engine, your left side of the engine, and then over where my map and my intake air temperature sensor and my boost sensor are. So those kind of, it's like three main harnesses after this point right here. Um, but the main quote, quote, main is going around the twisted shielded. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try to wrap everything around that. I have bunches and bunches and bunches of wires here um, as filler wire. Um, this is a lot of what I didn't use on the last time I got this harness too. Um, so that's why I have so much. So we're going to try to make a very nice twisted wire. All of the ones like these that are just two wires, I might leave them two, or I might put four, um, so two filler wires in, just to kind of fill it out a little bit. I already made the boost controller harness, um, so it's from the actual boost controller itself, the valve, um, and it goes out, you know, a foot or so, and it only had two wires on it, and I just heat shrinked that, and I wasn't a huge fan with how it came out, um, it's just, it, the smallest heat shrink I have, this stuff here, um, it just doesn't quite shrink around two wires. So I, I also forgot to wrap it in um, the this like shielding stuff right here though. Um, so I think if I wrap it in this tape and then maybe that shielding, I was having trouble getting it through because it was a bit sticky. Um, but if I wrap it through this and then put four wires, I think it'll turn into a nice round harness that is full and uh, fairly flexible. I did find uh, once it cools down, it is fairly inflexible, um, fairly stiff. But when it's warm, you can move it and mold it into whatever shape you need. So I think that's what we're going to do. I'm probably going to go ahead and mold most of this as I can um, when I'm doing the heat shrink. All right, big ramble, but let's go ahead and jump into this.